guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to charge an air conditioning unit and how to tell if you need to charge in subcoin or superheat. All right, so when you're attaching your gauge set up outside at the outdoor condenser or heat pump, um, or if you're attaching it to a geothermal unit, in cooling mode is when you're going to charge it, and it needs to be at least 65 degrees, 70 degrees outside, so there's a load on the inside of the house and the outside is within its normal working parameters of uh, say 65 degrees or above okay um, now to tell if you need to do superheat or subcooling you need to tell if you have a TXV all right if you do have a TXV uh, you can either read it on the rating plate of the evaporator coil or you can take the door off and verify if you have a TXV uh, you can also see on the outside of it sometimes you have the external equalization port mounted on the outside of the box and then also the thermostatic expansion bulb mounted on the outside. These two uh, are actually mounted on the inside of this evaporator coil. All right, and you can see that these lines right here are attaching to our TXV bulb. If you have a TXV, you have to charge in subcooling. Okay, the reason the reason for that is that the TXV will actually already monitor the superheat for you. So if you're trying to charge in superheat in, in cooling mode when you have a TXV you're going to notice that the charge is not really changing in, in your superheat, you know, to where, where it should. This TXV is always trying to maintain 14, temperature, uh, 14 degrees of superheat after it goes through the coil, it comes in down here. So it comes over here, it's high pressure, high temperature, liquid refrigerant comes in and turns into a low pressure, low temperature uh, liquid refrigerant. So say 80% liquid, 20% flash gas and starts coming up through the evaporator coil. All right, at the middle of the evaporator coil, it goes through a phase change and it turns um, from, you know, from vapor and liquid at saturation point and it's turning into a complete vapor. The temperature increase, say from here to the, where the top is and where it's red, where it comes out of the evaporator coil at, that is called the superheat. And your TXV can actually monitor the exact superheat of what's happening. It has the pressure coming in, okay? And it's taking its back pressure actually from the external equalization port and it takes the um, the refrigerant that's actually in the TXV bulb that came with your TXV when you bought it uh, heats up or cools down depending on the temperature of this vapor line all right so when this TXV bulb is actually mounted at 10 or 2 o'clock you know even if it's mounted at say um, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock you know somewhere around in there optimal is 10 to 2 or if it's vertically, you're going to have this stem up, okay, this stem up, the, this part of the bulb down. It can actually monitor and adjust the actual refrigerant flow because it's reading for 14 degree temp difference between here and here through pressure and temperature correlations. All right, so if you're trying to monitor your superheat, which is your, actually your total superheat out at the outdoor condensing unit, that's not going to work for you, okay? And what it's going to do is this TXV is just going to be blocking up the liquid, okay? And the liquid's going to gather in your condenser coil, okay? You're going to have more subcooling. So this is your outdoor unit. In this case, it's a condenser. It can be a heat pump. But to have more subcooling, you're going to have to have more liquid, all right? So say at the top you have high pressure, high temperature vapor, then you have your saturated state, and then you have your liquid, say, as your bottom third. All right, your liquid, there's going to be more of a charge. So to add more refrigerant in, the place that it's actually getting stored in is in your outdoor unit, okay? In order to have more subcooling measured here, it's a temperature decrease in liquid form, you're going to have to have more liquid in your outdoor unit. Okay, so that's how that works. So you have to actually, with a TXV, you can figure out how much refrigerant's in the system by measuring the liquid in the outdoor condensing unit because this will take care of your 14 degree temp difference um, for, for, for your superheat, okay? Not your temperature difference for your return air and supply air. Um, but this will, this will actually measure your, uh, your 14 degrees of superheat roughly. This, this particular one's a non-adjustable one. There's other ones that are adjustable. Most that you use in residential, you're gonna find are non-adjustable. There really is no need to be adjusting the spring pressure that came from the factory in those typically. That's more for like say uh, refrigerators and things like that and freezers. Uh, but uh, now if it was a piston or an orifice, which is just a tiny little hole through, through a little, um, uh, it's, ba it's basically just a small restriction that's fixed. 
And if that's what you have there instead of this TXV, there is no way for you to be able to check to see how much superheat you're having coming out of the evaporator coil at your service valves if you're just checking this in subcooling, okay? Your piston orifice capillary tube has no way of controlling the amount of superheat coming across your evaporator coil, all right? So you, you have to check uh, pistons, orifice, and cap tube systems in superheat and not in subcooling. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.